Hey guys, Strider here, or as I'm known in some other places, uh, a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, I really was, really wanted to quickly go over a post hike uh, gear list here for what we did and didn't need, and etc. etc. Like you've seen on a lot of other videos, uh, we were very minimal with our choices, and I'll go over this really quick so that I'm not wasting your time. Uh, we did end up using the ramen. That was the greatest thing ever. So I'll go ahead and circle that. It was terrific, and it. Uh, it was great to look forward to at the end of the day and very cheap. I won't. I don't know about specific numbers. We kind of varied that and we picked up some in the towns along the way. Uh, so yes, the ramen was amazing and I would recommend that. Uh, we did not end up using the peanut butter and all this kind of cracker stuff because it ended up being very dry and at the speed we were going and uh, we weren't getting enough water. They were too dry to really carry in, be a feasible food source. Uh, they were just a pain to eat. The same with uh, Cliff Bars. If you choose those, they were kind of dry uh, and tough to get down if you're dehydrated. Uh, we also did not use that. We were, And again, lots of people out there had tons of different types of food. We had a very small budget and we were mainly just going for calories. So we did not splurge for the fancy sausage cheese uh, ordeal either and oops I accidentally had an extra line there uh, so we didn't take that either the crystal light was terrific I would take that as well because it mixed up you know you could take water and water is great but this helped mix it up so you uh, you didn't get too bored of the water uh, we did take some powdered coffee eh, we ended up not using much of that it was great for I would take a little bit maybe just in case you want to wake up one morning and have a cup of coffee depending on your how, how much you like coffee it was great to have maybe once or twice we didn't end up using that a whole lot moving on we let's say let's look at my gear list this pack again as I said before the hike I'll say after the hike it was terrific I had no issues with it I keep saying terrific but whatever it's a good word uh, it was a great pack no issues very ergonomic very comfortable I didn't have any issues with the chafing. I, I saw some re people reviewing that there were chafing. I think I might have uh, had that issue at first, but what I ended up doing was adjusting the belt properly, adjusting the way it was on my body properly, and then there was no chafing issues whatsoever after that. So I would suggest that you make sure that you know how to put the pack on correctly and you shouldn't have any issues. I would not take the knife. I did use it you know, to dig uh, poop holes and whatever. Uh, but you can get away with not having a huge knife. I mean, you're, even if you if you get an attack with a wolf or something, you're not going to be dealing with a knife. I, I, I just I didn't need a knife that large. Uh, the jet boil was awesome. I don't think you're going to see a whole lot of reviews that say otherwise. It was great. It was small. It was compact. The fuel lasted a long time. And when you want a meal at the end of the day, you don't want to fuss around with bunch of crazy stuff and pouring liquids and all kinds of stuff like that this the jet boil was awesome uh, the trek poles were absolutely vital uh, this was the first time I ever hiked with trek poles and you know you use them for a selfie stick you use them for support when you're hiking in the snow I mean you're using them as a handhold you absolutely need them if you're if you're going on a trek this large even if you're just doing a couple sections you definitely are gonna want trek poles uh, the light load towels, I think I used maybe once. Uh, they, they were so light that I would go ahead and recommend those. Um, didn't use them too much, but I mean, it's such a small, small light thing that the utility of it, I, I guess I would recommend based on that alone. Cause you never know when you're going to need a little bit of a uh, towel action. Uh, I did not end up using the Gerber Flint and Steel and I probably wouldn't take it again it was kind of an unnecessary way there's enough traffic on the trail really and then uh, if you get into emergency so dire that you need to make fire you've already messed up a lot okay so you this this might be great if you if you plan on messing up a lot but yeah it didn't end up needing that and i probably wouldn't take it again the same with the compass technology is far enough along and with topographical maps and whatnot you probably don't need a compass unless you plan on messing up the z-packs toothbrush and the case 
awesome, very light, very small. I would take that again. Brushing my teeth was a, a basic hygiene thing that was great for morale. The z packs titanium spoon, you don't necessarily need a titanium spoon, depending on how, uh, just like I said in the pre-hike gear list, you don't necessarily need something made of titanium. You could use the $1 REI spoon would be fine. But this one was small, it was short, I would recommend it, it was great. The Leatherman Micra, I would take that again, it was very small, very light, and if you ever need to cut anything, or if you ever need to do anything, uh, you know, that a basic... Leatherman style tool can do, cut rope or whatever, you've got it available and it's very small. The, let's see, what is it, the Sawyer Mini Water Filtration was awesome. It was a great alternative to the the pack you can see in our other video. Uh, we had this one for on-the-go filtration, so we, we find a little bit of water, we can throw this thing on our directly onto our smart water bottle, which I definitely would take those again. Um, and it fits directly on the smart water bottle and then you can filter from any water source pretty much immediately. It takes a little bit of squeeze and then you're, and you're ready to go. So I would definitely do that. But I would also, I'll, I'll go over Gort's uh, gear here in a second, but I would definitely take that Sawyer. Uh, the HDR, Sony HDR ASV100 was awesome. Very small, very light again, just like all the rest of it. And... Um, it filmed great. It was tough. I put it underwater, as you can see, uh, maybe one small portion of the video, the previous video. Um, yeah, I didn't have any issues whatsoever. The battery life was great. We used a solar charger, as you'll see in a second. And uh, the only issues with that was the mic was a little bit sensitive. If you get it, any kind of vibration from your trek poles to the camera, it, it may end up vibrating, but. Make sure you got it all tested out beforehand and you'll be all right. I did end up using the stick pick to hold that on there so that I could do some, uh, you know, selfie stick style recording and that was great. The lighter obviously is kind of a necessary thing. We used it to start fire when we were at a campfire spot and I mean it's basic. When we're not in the matches days anymore, I mean you can carry matches if you like but lighter was great. The bear canister we did end up taking and we carried it longer than we needed to but the smaller size worked great for our purposes. If you're a hiker that can go 18 to 20 miles a day you're never gonna need a larger canister than this if you eat the way we were eating which we were eating pretty minimal. But if you need to eat more than this I guess you can get the large one but we saw some other people carrying it. It just seemed extra large. We really didn't need it. Anything that did not fit in that, we would take the dry package stuff and put it along the side in a different pouch. Uh, headlamp, awesome. Uh, I, I don't have the specs for that. I will try to find that and put it in the description, but it's just a basic headlamp with, you know, one large battery with stick in there and, and light your way. We didn't end up doing a lot of really early morning hikes so it was mainly just for in the camp when you're popping blisters and whatever so you definitely need a light and I would suggest even a backup light in case that one squirrels out on you but you know you can also get stuff along the way it's, you're not there's only some stretches where you're uh, out far away from a uh, resupply point or somewhere where you can get stuff you'll, you'll see that on the map if you do some any kind of planning so you'll be fine with that. I would personally, I definitely would keep the uh, the handkerchief type, what, whatever you call this thing. I would keep the um, I would keep it because you know you can use it to keep the sweat off your eyes when you're going up a difficult climb, and you want to keep the sweat out of your eyes. And you know, hanky, just basic hanky business. You can deal with that. Uh, the beanie was great. The Z-Pax beanie. Doesn't have to be Z-Packs, can be any beanie you want. That one was great, light, uh, warm, everything I needed. The head net we never needed, so that if you if you're doing the entire hike, we didn't need it in the sections that we did. But if you're going to do the hike from start to finish, you might consider picking one of those up along the way for when you get to Washington or anywhere where there's uh, insects, uh, so that you can hike and have 
you know, without insects biting your neck and your face the whole time, that seems like it would be kind of annoying. Uh, th all these Columbia gear here, there's the shirt and stuff, terrific, light, no issues with them, nothing, to nothing tore, nothing broke, nothing ripped. Uh, there's tons of um, gear videos on that, so I'm not gonna kill that. I'm not gonna overdo that. Uh, darn tough socks. We did we we did run across one person who said that these socks were not great, but I think that person was crazy because I loved them. They were they were tough. They were very snug on my feet. They were warm. Uh, I had no issues whatsoever. So uh gloves i had some generic gloves i didn't have anything special there you definitely need gloves i ended up getting frog togs and i carried those for a while I, well i carried them the whole way and they were there's absolutely nothing wrong with them for the rain they were a little bit they were a little bit bulky to put in the pack they didn't really stuff down too much but i wasn't carrying so much that that was an issue if you if you uh really really are stretched for space maybe get a different set of rain gear that's uh, smaller and you can compact a little better but for what they what they did they weren't heavy or anything crazy like that so they work great for my purposes um, and then the tent here I had the single tent if you're looking at um, these tents the, sp the specific ones that we got I ended up getting a single man tent and my brother got the double. I would recommend the double for even a single person, just because if you're in a in your camp and you want to, uh, you know, just stretch out, and you've got your pack inside your tent with you for some reason, the double is going to give you plenty of room to do that. I, I was able to make it work just fine with the single, but it was a little bit cramped when I had everything inside the tent with me. But overall, it was a great tent, very light. I had you know, it's a freestanding tent. I didn't have to worry about bugs crawling on me. Uh, I wasn't one of these uh, guys that has, you know, just a rain cover over me and I slept directly on the ground. I'm a little bit spoiled. I had, I like to have complete uh, seal around me so I'm not having bugs bite me and whatnot. So, um, I did have, you know, a, a mummy pack that took me down for a few degree. I mean, you could you could stay warm. You can get any pack you want. Look at the uh, weights and whatnot. Uh, you, you shouldn't have any issue finding a pack. Basically, basically the price and the weight ratio is what you're going to be looking for, and you'll be all right. Uh, like I said, my brother had the uh, two wide tent. He had the same exact pack. He had the same exact sleeping bag. He did carry army tins, and uh, we ended up using them minimally I didn't need one at all he used them to cook his some of his stuff in but I had the jet boil which kind of trumped that I personally wouldn't carry that but he carried it and he didn't have any issues so I can't exactly not recommend it it's it's a pretty utilitarian thing um, he also had this the whole sport thing which was nice that he had the uh, the little eye hook there on the end so that he could hook it onto stuff uh, nothing wrong with that just a spoon he also had a regular size Gerber, which, you know, yeah, I, I would take the Micra personally, but that's a personal choice thing. Uh, he also had a large knife, which, again, I personally wouldn't recommend. It's a little bit too much for what you need. You don't you don't need something like that. Uh, lighter, yes. This uh, Goal Zero solar panel, I would definitely recommend. I, I had a few people say that the solar panel was not going to do it. You know, they had lots of negative things to say about it, but it worked amazing for us. Uh, he would strap it on the back of his pack as we hiked, and then he would plug his phone into it and put it in his uh, arm pocket. So he was charging the entire time we were hiking. When we got somewhere we needed to look, look at the map or whatever he had digitally on his phone, everything was perfectly charged. You didn't have to worry about anything whatsoever. So... Uh, I wouldn't get a cheap, cheap solar panel, but the Goal Zero worked for us, and if you get anything relatively similar to that, you will be fine, and I would recommend it. Um, we did get a camp-sized 3 liter, I think is what the size was, water filtration system so that when you get to camp, you can hang this thing on a branch, you can, um, you know, just hang out and let it filter when you're in camp, and that worked great for when we didn't you know, it's the end of the day. You don't want to start squeezing bottles through a filter. 
you can just pour water in the top and just wait and then your water fills up for you. That was awesome. Uh, this right here was Gort's, um, this was going to be his camp stove. He ended up having a huge issue with the fuel. I think he lost one uh, on, uh, on the way to the uh, trailhead. And then after that, I don't know that he used it more than once. He might have used it once, but I don't think you need it. If you get something like a jet boil, that this right here is... I, I can't say anything negative about it per se, but it just seems kind of unnecessary if you got something nice and handy like the jet boil. Now, if the jet boil ha happened to fail, he would have that. Uh, yeah. Um, we did have a little bit of line, and we ended up using it... Um, never. I don't think we ever used it, but I would circle it. I'll keep it circled because you never know when you're going to use a little bit of paracord for something. If you want to put up a line, dry some socks, whatever. I would take a little bit of paracord. Uh, again, he had some trek poles. He had the same exact bear canister. He had some silkies. I had some silkies as well, even though they're not on my list up there. Um, yeah, I maybe used them once, you know, even in the, even in the, on top of the snow in the cold weather, uh, I didn't need anything because if I'm not hiking and being warm from hiking, I was warm enough in my uh, sleeping bag. So I didn't need the silkies. I wouldn't carry them again. Uh, he had a baklava, which, you know, if you're a cold person, if you need extra warmth, by all means, carry a baklava. It's not a big extra weight. He had the head net as well. Again, for the northern states, I would take it. Uh, he had an Under Armour beanie. That's fine. Headlamp. Uh, this was a big tool for us, was this Galaxy S7. Uh, it doesn't have to be a specific cell phone. But all of our maps, all of our topographical maps, anything digital we needed, um, we had on that. And we were able to consult that. And it worked great. Didn't have any issues. Charged it, like I said, with this solar panel. And... Just toss him the whole time, no issues. Uh, of course, he had a beanie or a, a, yeah, a hat to cover his uh, cover his face. You know, the brim is necessary so you don't get sunburn on your face. Which, if you see the video, he got sunburned still. But you know, that's because of the reflection of the reflection of the snow. We went up into the Sierras before all the snow was melted, and he still got a little bit burnt. Uh, he carried this the whole time, and it was great. Like I said, he he had the phone inside of this pocket right here. And the solar panel attached to his back, so the wire would run straight to his phone there. Uh, sure, that schematic makes sense, what I just drew. Um, so it worked out great. He didn't have to worry about uh, having to have an extra battery pack to charge overnight or anything. Uh, we didn't have to find an outlet ever. And we had some outlets available when we stopped in certain places and we used them, but uh, we didn't need them per se. So I, I definitely would recommend that system. It worked great. He had some rain gear, uh, nothing crazy with the rain gear or the gloves. I mean, it's pretty standard stuff. He did have some, he had some fancy underwear, you know, uh, deal with the underwear in your own way. Uh, you can get chafing. So I don't know if we added on here, I would definitely bring some, uh, some kind of system to deal with chafing some kind of powder, gold bond medicated powder worked great for us. Uh, I didn't circle the shoes on purpose on my list because that was a major issue for us. This shoe right here was great. There was no problem. Those are the ones I'm wearing on my feet right now. They have great support for my feet. Uh, they were not too minimal. The shoes I had were not even the ones that I have pictured up there. They were, but they were too minimal and they were super light. So I was not getting any fatigue whatsoever from the shoes, but they were not supportive enough to walk 18, 20 miles over various terrain. All right, so I would definitely recommend getting a really good sole and something that's going to support you for such a long walk. Uh, again, darn truck socks, they were great. Uh, these shorts, I think, were just, they separated from these, so it's the same thing. Uh, belt is good. Because you're going to lose weight. If you do the whole thing, especially, you're definitely going to lose weight. So, All right, moving on. 
Uh, I don't know that there's anything else gear-wise to cover over here on this big section. 12 top ROM. This used to be our daily list, but we ended up using the, we used the 12 top ramen. Let me change this color here so you can see. We used the top ramen. We, we got rid of the peanut butter cracker idea. We carried the, the 12 pack tortillas for one or two days and then stopped because they ended up being a little bit too dry and heavy and, and it just didn't work out for us. Uh, you know, food is one of those subjective things where it's going to be up to you and what you want to carry. We ended up mixing the tortillas entirely. We definitely got rid of the cliff bars. Great for protein, calories, all that goodness, but so dry. If you're dehydrated in any way, you're not going to want to try to choke down the cliff bar. Uh, Campbell's chunky soup bowls would have been great. We never used them though. <laughs> That's a good one if you want to have a resupply package, if you've got a really good home base and you get to a, a camp somewhere and you get one of those in the mail, it's going to be awesome. Uh, but that's again, like if you, if you have enough money to support some of this, some of this stuff, you'd be great. Nutella came with the tortillas. That was one of our things. We would throw Nutella or peanut butter on a tortilla and ended up just being too dry, too bulky. We did not, we, we nixed that for the next few days and went very minimal. Uh, baby wipes, definitely take baby wipes. You got to stay clean out there the best you can. Wipe yourself up, all your hot spots. Uh, clean is good. Uh, uh, you're going to be dirty, you're going to stink, and it's not going to be, you're not going to be smelling great, but um, I would definitely take some of those to stay as clean as possible. The one thing that's not on here is this bonus, it's kind of this bonus item, which was jerky. Jerky was like the gold. Let me just write this in broken toddler language here. Jerky was amazing when we got that in a resupply package. It was just terrific. Again, there's that word. Uh, it, it was just the greatest thing ever to take a break from the other stuff we were eating and have a little bit of jerky. Really quickly, again, I just, there was a couple things I didn't circle, and I just want to cover them really quick. Uh, the the camera, the GoPro here. He did carry that. Um, my brother did, and he had some technical issues with it before we really got anywhere. He had some, some battery issues with it, so I can't give a proper review on that. I would suggest watching some other videos about that. We did not use it, so I will put a half circle on it in yellow, sure. So, you know, test that stuff. Uh, I would definitely test this stuff. I, I don't want to quickly burn over this subject too much because the, your entire trip, if you want to document it anyway, this is one of the most important things you're going to to be dealing with so do your research on this get as much documentation as you can take enough pictures that there isn't an issue when uh, you get to the end that you didn't record your experience properly you know take take as much uh, record as much as you can very important the uh, I, I mentioned that I used the Sony HDR underwater and I did use it underwater but I also had an underwater case that came with it so I was not sticking this camera directly in the water. Pretty important to note because if you stick this camera by itself directly underwater, it's probably going to die on you. Uh, so get that waterproof case first before you do that. And I don't think you can actually put it on a selfie stick without that extra case that came with it anyway. It's, unless you get some kind of adapter or something. I don't know. Uh, but I did have a waterproof case. So yeah, make sure you get that. Don't just throw that thing underwater by itself. Uh, the one thing I would say overall from the entire trip that I would recommend to other people is that you can plan, you can plan, you can plan. As you can see, we did checkpoints all over this map. We planned our resupply route pretty uh, rigidly by miles and all kinds of stuff. But when you get out there, your, your plan's going to change. So you can stress as much as you want in the plan ahead of time, but, you know, don't, don't stress so much that you're not ready for something to change because it likely will change. Things do change. We ran across some brilliant hikers that, you know, they're, they're almost Olympians and they ran into issues and they ended up having to turn around and go get medical care. And, you know, lots of things can happen, but lots of things cannot happen. Okay. So just, just take your time, enjoy yourself, record everything. If you 
want to have some kind of documentation or don't record anything. You know, it's up to you. But don't stress about too many facets of this trip. And the one, there's a few things that I didn't cover on this, and I would recommend that you don't use this video as some kind of exhaustive list of what you need to bring. If you're excited as I was for this trip, you're going to be watching lots more videos than this, so I'm not too worried about that. You're definitely going to need, you know, some basic things like a first aid kit and, and that kind of thing. So don't use this as, as your list to go off of. Definitely wouldn't recommend that. Uh, as far as first aid kits go, since we're on that subject, I used about, uh, you know, a couple band-aids and a needle to pop blisters. And that was the only thing, maybe some Neosporin when I fell down a mirror pass. I scraped myself up a little bit, used a little bit of uh, some gauze or something on that, but... Overall, I didn't need much, but obviously that's one of those things that, you know, you take your own risks with that. Be as safe as you know you need to be. That's all I need to say about that. And I would also say that uh, me and my hiking partner, we have a, we had a little bit of experience, so we're not, you know, jumping off the couch one day and doing a massive hike. This wasn't, you know, a spur of the moment, let's go tomorrow type thing. It did require some planning. Make sure you're safe when you do it. Um... And speaking of which, in preparation, it does not matter how fit you are, how fit you think you are, it is absolutely vital that you start hiking uh, before. It doesn't even have to be mountains. You can hike on the, or, or just walk on the ground, but make sure that you do some hiking, preferably on dirt, not on pavement, and find out where those aches and pains are going to show up and plan for those. I would, you know, do 5, 10 miles, 15 miles if you can squeeze it in for a couple of weeks or even a month ahead of time because that's that's going to be absolutely vital when you are out there in the middle of nowhere you're already going to know which parts of your body are going to be hurting you'll know what you need to prepare for that so um there's probably stuff that i didn't cover but there's so many videos on this the the pct is so popular now uh so i'm not i'm not terribly worried that you're going to overlook something because like I said, don't use this as your exhaustive list. Go watch all those other videos. There's tons of documentation. Uh, get involved with the the Pacific Crest Trail website and all that stuff. There's tons of info. They do uh, they'll do online uh, what do you call it S webinars or whatever where you can sit in and ask questions if you got other questions. Uh, they did for this last year. I'm sure they'll do that again. Uh, so yeah, get involved. Get all the information you need and just go have an amazing time. I wish you guys the best of luck.